Hey everybody, Erica Serwin here. Happy Friday. Today's Facebook Friday is not live. We are currently moving our oldest daughter into her first college apartment this week, so I am not home. I am away, but I pre-recorded this so that you guys wouldn't miss out on some fun. I know it's not as much fun when we don't get to chat, but I do have three projects planned for you using the Lovely and Lasting Bundle. This is from the annual catalog and it's um, only $36.75. I love when a bundle is under $50 or even under $40. This is a great bundle. As you can see, lots of beautiful sentiments. We've got some great bold images, but what I really love is this little label outline and the matching label punch. So this bundle doesn't have dies, it has a punch. So for those of you out there who love punches, this is a great one for you. And this punch you'll use all the time, even without the bundle. Now the other part of this whole suite of products that I love is the designer series paper. It reminds me a lot of the Sweet Symmetry designer series paper that we had last year. Um, I did a whole Club Create on that and I almost put this one down for Club Create um, but we just have so many good things to choose from right now. It's hard for me to always narrow it down. So I decided we would do a Facebook Friday. So as you can see on one side, you've got more monochromatic patterns. And on the other side, you've got some more busy patterns. And what I recommend is if you're going to use a busy pattern, then pull in one of the more muted monochromatic patterns. Um, this paper is really, really busy, so don't try to, um, you know, use a bunch of patterns together because then it, you'll just your your card will get lost. Um, but see, look, those look good together. I mean, really, a lot of these can be mixed together. So. Um, Give the paper a try, it's 12 by 12. You get two sheets of each of these beautiful prints and we're gonna use them on all three of our projects today. Okay, well, let me show you the first card. Now, fair warning, fussy cutting. I know <laughs> some of you get mad when we do fussy cutting, but then there's some of you who love fussy cutting. So get ready if you love fussy cutting. Um, these flowers actually are pretty big and easy to fussy cut. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, there's actually several in colors used in this uh, suite. You've got Evening Evergreen, Sweet Sorbet, and Pale Papaya, um, which are the inks that we're using today as well as Night of Navy. Now, if you go over to pinkbuckaroo.com, you will find, as always, the PDF with all three projects as well as the product list and the measurements that you need um, and any of the announcements that I usually give you. Um, and if you want these three projects, remember your order has to be in by Monday, August 15th um, at midnight. And the way you get these is for free. You order anything you want from my store, as long as it's $35 and it uses that host code, I'll send you the projects for free. All right. So let's see our first card. You know, it's pretty simple. It's got a lot of stamping in it. So other than that, I feel like it's pretty simple. Now we've got, um, a basic white thick card base, and we've got a piece of, um, basic white that's four by five and a fourth. And the first thing that we're gonna do is cut a circle in the middle, kind of up at the top. And I am using two of the stylish shape circles, which I really like because not only does it give you stitching on the circle that it cuts out, but it also leaves a stitched border on that negative, um, piece that you cut it out of. So put those two, it's the biggest and then the third biggest, okay? So we've skipped one size in there. And we're gonna run that through. If you're afraid they're gonna slip, use your post-it tape and that will keep them in place. All right, so this piece you're not gonna use, but we are gonna use this piece and this piece. And you can see how it puts the stitching on the circle and it also puts the stitching on the outside of that circle that you stamped. All right, now that we have those cut, you're gonna wanna get your Stamparatus out. And um, we're gonna stamp that big image on here. And you can see we're gonna do it twice. Um, earliest, I mean, um, Evening Evergreen and Sweet Sorbet. And we're gonna have to fussy cut those flowers, but when we stamp it in, early, in <laughs> Evening Evergreen, 
um, we are going to stamp those flowers, but as you can see, you don't even see them because we are going to cover them with those sweet sorbet flowers. Now, what I want you to do is get your piece of DSP, it's just four by four, and line it up exactly how it's going to be here on your um, white, your larger white piece, okay? And what I like to do is just put a tiny bit of adhesive right there just to hold that in place. We're actually gonna pop that up with a dimensional, but we've put a little bit of, of adhesive. Okay, so that looks good, it's gonna line up. So now what we're gonna do is take that large image and I really wanna make sure that the stems and the leaves show through right here under the circle, right here, and here on that circle. I'm not concerned about the leaves, but I do want those little pieces of foliage to show through. So I'm kind of tilting it a bit. All right, so carefully pick that up. Let's see if I, if it sticks, if your photopolymer sticks like, like that at the beginning and it pulls up your paper, just take something like your scissors or your bone folder to push it down. Those photopolymers are pretty sticky and uh, you have to, um, Hold, you know, when you first put them on there, you have to hold it down. Let's see. Grab my ink pad. Evening Evergreen. Now, my Evening Evergreen ink pad needs to be re-inked. But apparently, I never ordered the ink refill. That is so frustrating, you guys. When you order your ink pads, order the ink refill at the same time. Because nothing is more frustrating than needing to refill your ink and you don't have the ink refill. All right, so I'm gonna stamp it again and really concentrate on pushing down those leaves. I want a nice dark green. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so those are gonna show through. Let's see, maybe a little bit more down here. Let's just do a little bit more since we're stamping on a colored piece of paper. Okay, good. All right, so remove that. Now you're gonna need another piece of basic white. This is just any size. Um, but first, clean off your, your stamp really well with your chamois. My chamois needs some water. It's getting a little crusty. <laughs> All right, let's see. Now we're gonna take sweet sorbet and do the same thing. Right. Now, again, I just love using the Stamparatus because if you, you know, your, your image isn't quite bright and solid like you want it, just re-stamp it like that. All right, good. Now, let's see, let's move this. I think we might use that again. I'm not sure, I can't remember. All right, now over here, what we're gonna do is we want to raise this up with a dimensional. So I'm gonna take that off before we put these together. We're gonna to do some stamping on here. Um, let me grab a piece of, where did I put my grid paper? Right here. We're gonna use this really cute, um, look at that. <laughs> my chamois needs to be cleaned, doesn't it? We're gonna stamp this really cute kind of, it looks like a quilt to me, a little quilted image in the corners, but I want you to stamp off first. So it's gonna be nice and light, okay? Like that. All right, then um, take your other, your sentiment, whichever you're gonna use. And again, this stamp set has some great sentiments. Um, let's look and see where we put it. Just about right, maybe down a little bit, right there, okay? So if you don't need a happy birthday card, change the sentiment to whatever you want it to be. All right, now we're gonna take our dimensionals and I'm gonna put one in each corner like this. Now, you know, you might think, oh, that looks awful. Well, I'm not worried about that. We're, that's not gonna even be shown, that part. All right, so put this down on there. 
make sure I get that in the right spot. And then this is going to go right there. All right, so two dimensionals. And line it up right here with these flowers. You know, that doesn't look like we're in the middle, does it? So that we can move this over and trim it down. Let's look at that. It does need to be moved over just a bit like that, okay? Does that look about centered? No, again, boy, this is giving me a run for my money today. Okay, there we go. Now it's centered. So if your paper's off a bit, just trim it off, no big deal. All right, now comes the fussy cutting. You're gonna wanna get your little scissors and just follow along on the outside of each flower, leaving just a little tiny white border. I always recommend using our paper snips. They are the best. I always tell you guys, they even do a great job cutting hair. <laughs> if your kids need a little snip, just pull out your paper snips and they do a fantastic job. They stay very sharp, um, but then they are also very sharp, so be careful. <laughs> I have poked myself with that tip many times. They do come with a cover. And silly me, you know, you guys know how I am. I don't leave that cover on there. So if you leave the cover, I have a, actually have a pair of these in my car. And my daughter used them and threw them back in. And the point was sticking up. And I thought, dang, daughter, you know, why'd you do that? And I thought, well, Erica, it's your fault for not keeping that cover on it. So keep the cover. Don't be like me and throw that cover away thinking you don't need it. That's like the story of my life. All right, um, we're gonna do, we're not gonna do that one because we don't have that lower image, but we are gonna do this one. Another thing that helps is to cut away any extra cardstock that you have. Um, now you can also change the colors of this, these flowers. If you look in the catalog um, or even on the back, of your DSP pack. It's gonna give you all the Stampin' Up! colors that are used in the paper. Sometimes, like in this paper, the colors are muted, so it's kind of hard to tell. The Knight of Navy is a very dark color, but in the paper, the DSP for this, it's muted. It's like, um, you know, watered down a little bit. So it really helps to be able to look on the back of your, of your pack of paper, and if you've thrown that part away, look in the catalog where the paper is and it'll tell you all the colors. All right, now just put a dimensional and we've got to figure out which way these go like that. Okay, let's move it over a little bit. So you get all of that evening evergreen flower covered. You don't want that showing. All right, then it's kind of like a puzzle. You gotta turn it, turn it, turn it until you see it. Now. Do you guys think I should cut that flower off? Over here, I, I stamped it lower. I'm thinking maybe I should cut that flower out. I don't know, what do you guys think? I wish you were here to tell me. I'm thinking, yes, let's do it, why not? We've got it, it's no extra work except for just cutting. So depending on how you cut your image will depend on how much of it is shown, okay? So this one is gonna go under that. I don't know if I like that or not. Hmm, let me see, I don't like that part. Let's see, what do you guys think? Flower there or no flower? It looks kind of weird. I think I'm gonna leave it off. I think I'm gonna leave it off. Okay, all right, now we've already stamped the sentiment. We're gonna take um, our linen thread and add a little bow down here, which will cover up that little flower, actually. That'll be good. All right, linen thread, glue dot. And then, since, you know, everything at Stampin' Up! is match, 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 all the colors match, we have embellishments that are these colors. Um, this is strawberry sorbet, which is, or not strawberry sorbet, that's a really old color. No, that's a mixture of an old color and this color. 
sweet sorbet and here they are right here in our in color dots and i'm just going to take a few and add them up here like that all right all right that looks good now we've got one more thing to do bring your card base over and get that grid paper again and we're going to stamp this again in full strength this time okay it's going to be in the back you're not going to see a whole lot of it but i'm going to just kind of stamp that there to carry that design over a little bit and you know what how about we do it on the inside too just a little bit in the corner like that i like that all right last but not least for more dimensionals And we are done. I love this card. You can do a lot with a white card base and a piece of white card stock. Look at that. What do you guys think? Lovely. I think it's lovely. Okay, let's close things up. And you know what? I'm since this is pre-recorded. I'm going to pause the video and go wash my hands. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. You know, I like doing live videos because we get to talk, but there are some benefits <laughs> of pre-recording. My hands are much cleaner now. Dawn dish soap, man, that is like the cure for everything, right? Gets everything off. Okay, our next card uses a dye that you guys know I love. This is the Spots and Dots dyes dye or maybe it's the dots and spots. I, I don't know. Spots and dots, dots and spots, same thing. I've got some, some little Klingons here. This die is available in the catalog um, for purchase, but it's also available for free during celebration. It's one of the level two picks you can get free when you spend $100. I, you know, if I'm going to get anything on that celebration list, this is what I would get if you don't have it yet. If you already have it, bonus, you can pick something else. Okay, let's see. Um, I think the only die cutting we're going to do is this. So let's grab that piece. Um, we're going to use this next week too. Next week, we're going to do, um, oh, let's see. You guys, I'm terrible with names of stamp sets. We're going to do some kind of school themed projects using the... The little kid, you know, the little the little boy with the dog. What's it called? You guys are yelling at me. I can hear you. I know. I can't remember what it's called. But we're going to do some cards with that, some projects. I have a really cute 3D project planned for you next Friday. So we're going to use this as well on one of those projects. And I want to tell you that if you use a yellow, then you've got a piece of cheese. It totally looks like a piece of cheese, which... It's really cute, especially if you have a mouse stamp. <laughs> but today, no, we're not making cheese. We're just making a really cute background. All right, so then I'm just going to take this, get all your dots poked out, and then you want to grab your mini dimensionals. Mini dimensionals will fit in here perfectly. And I'm going to just put like 10 on here. I'm gonna just go to town with these because we, we don't want it to sag in the middle or at the top. So if you kind of scatter them around, this piece, um, by the way, is three and three fourths by five. All right. There we go. Boop, 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 couple more. I don't know about you guys, but the many dimensionals, my hands have a hard time with them because they're so small all right I think that's enough all right let's put that down on here like that now I have cut three strips of that lovely designer series paper they're all one inch by four um, and we're going to just kind of cut the ends at an angle you can use any of the prints here it really doesn't matter but again I say it doesn't matter, but again, you know, don't get too crazy with the patterns. As you can see, I picked three that are more solid in color. 
Well, maybe I cut those long. Well, that needs to be shortened. Maybe that's a four and a fourth. That looks a little bit too long. All right, we'll put the, that's Night of Navy. This is Pale Papaya. And then this one is Sweet Sorbet. All right, so there's that. Now, we're gonna stamp that big old stamp again on a circle this time. Let's clean it while I was away washing my hands. <laughs> I also washed my chamois. Now they're really wet, look at that. Okay, so let's see, come on, dry. <sighs> you know what, I have a towel right here. I have a super cute gingham dish towel that I keep in here. It comes in very handy. I found it in a cute little antique store, so I can't tell you guys where I got it, but I mean, you know, random. Okay, so now I've got a basic white circle. This is the um, second largest, okay? Again, I'm just going to put a little piece of adhesive. The reason I can't use my... Um, uh, magnets here is because we're going to stamp over the whole thing. Now, if you used a piece of white cardstock and then cut out the circle, you could use your magnets. So there's that option. All right. So now here's the other thing with this. We're going to, we want night, we want the Navy to be muted, not solid, dark Navy. So we're going to stamp off on, stamp off on, <laughs> stamp off first on a piece of grid paper. Okay. So Knight of Navy and just stamp off, get kind of some of that ink off of the stamp. See how dark that is? And then let's move that down just a tad because I didn't, for some reason, didn't get the top of that flower right there. See that? That's weird. All right. There we go. So doesn't it kind of look like denim? Kind of a denim color. We've had colors in the past that were denim. I can't remember what they're called. Misty Moonlight was similar. Um, we Didn't we have a color that was like, huh, I don't know. You guys, why are names so hard for me? Okay, now we're going to emboss this. And if you look on um, the, actually, I didn't emboss it. Weird, I thought I did. Okay, well, we're embossing it with a portafoil. I don't know why I didn't. Hmm, that's so weird. I swear I did. Quarter foil embossing folder. This is not one of our thick embossing folders. So take off plate two and you're going to use your clear plates. Maybe. <laughs> Let's see. Yes. I always think I know the sandwich and then I do it and it's like wrong. But that was right. Okay. There. Isn't that awesome? Looks like fabric. Okay. Let's move that guy out of the way. Now, here comes the my favorite stamp right here that matches this. When you stamp on your cardstock and you're gonna punch, you wanna be cognizant. If you stamped it up here at the top and you couldn't reach it, you'd be annoyed and you'd have to cut your cardstock. So we're gonna cut it right here at the bottom in Sweet Sorbet. Right there at the bottom, like that. And then we'll punch that out. Oh, so cute. Oh, I love, this is one of my most favorite punches in a, from a very long time. They, they have really, I love that punch. Okay, now here's another stylish shape circle and we're gonna stamp the thank you in full strength Knight of Navy. Now be careful with your Knight of Navy because it tends to smear. It's like maybe it takes a little bit longer to dry. So be careful with it. All right. This card is so much easier than <laughs> I said the other one was simple. It was. Didn't have a whole lot of supplies. But this one is just way simpler. All right. Now we're going to put that there, obviously, with dimensionals. And then we're going to put the little label right here again dimensionals you're going to need an extra little bit of postage on here and then we'll put our circle let's see i'm going to put mm, that may be too high maybe over here like that mm, i don't know maybe we just need one let's see i'll put it right here 
and because we want it kind of down like that. Okay, so now grab your linen thread again, tie a bow, kind of a, a big bow. You want it kind of big. And I will tell you, if your ribbon is pretty curly, take it off the, the bolt and try to straighten it out. If you have a flat iron, a hair flat iron, you can use that to straighten out your ribbon and your twine. Um, also, a travel iron. I keep one of those here in my office for ribbon that really won't lay down flat. All right, now, glue dot. You know, I think I'm gonna take it off from, the, from this side so that I can just slide it down like I'm doing surgery right there behind. All right, now last but not least, we're gonna add a few of these brushed metallic adhesive backed dots. Okay, one, two, three, and we're done. All right, so there you have it. Two cards that, you know, pretty simple. <laughs> Not a lot of supplies. Um, and really, look, we've used that stamp twice, and it looks very different both times. No fussy cutting here. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, one more project. All right, I always like to do a 3D project, and this this is, you know, a wraparound box, I think, a wraparound bag. You make a little box, and then you wrap the DSP around it. Um, it's a great way to use up DSP if you've got an overabundance of DSP. It's also a great way to show off the DSP. Um, I'm going to use a different pattern for my project today just to show you how you can, um, you know, use two different projects. And look, there's where that is embossed. I knew I had used that embossing folder somewhere. Um, okay, let's make the bag first. So you're gonna need a piece of sweet sorbet cardstock that measures four and a fourth by three and a half. And we're just gonna score it at one inch on all four sides, okay? So you can see it's not a real big box on the bottom. It's Mm, one and a half by two and a fourth, okay? Not real big. So if the bigger the piece of cardstock, the, the bigger your bag will be. All right, so burnish those lines. And this box is not gonna be seen. The only thing that's gonna be seen is the very bottom. So I'm not real worried about what it looks like. I am gonna use just some um, seal here for the sake of the video, put seal on all four corners and then fold them up and into the sides, okay? So there's your box. Now you've got this piece of DSP and mine measures six by nine or six by eight and a half. I think six by eight and a half will work, but six by nine will probably give you extra room. Um, I think what we'll do is use some tear and tape. And you want to put tear and tape all along the bottom of one edge, the back side, okay? And then also along one of the sides, okay? Now, take your scissors, your paper snips, or your take your pick tool, and get off that backing. And I'm gonna start here so that the back will have the seam, okay? Um, I'm gonna take this, let me think, make sure I'm doing it right. Okay, down here, you wanna start at the bottom edge of your box. Oh my goodness, come on. Right there. And then you're gonna wrap it around, pushing in that adhesive, trying to get as close to that edge as you can, okay? And then, because we have adhesive all along here, that's gonna close it up. Let's get that right in the right place, right there. All right, so now just take it, and I like mine to flare out a little bit, so I'm gonna flare it out and push that seam in. 
Okay, so that is your bag. Put some Hershey Kisses in there. Um, you know, make it an easy gift. Hershey Kisses. You know, there are so many delicious Hershey Kisses these days, but I try to avoid them because I can't, I just am really, I have no self-control when it comes to Hershey Kisses. Right now I have the Cookies and Cream Hershey Kisses here in my office. I bought them for a project, <laughs> quote. And they, I swear, they sit over there in that corner calling my name. Eat me. They're so good. Okay, so now we fold that like that, punched a hole, just a regular hole punch. And I'm gonna set down that to hold it down so that we can take our twine. Let's cut it off and tie those together. You know, when your bag is full, this will be easier. Okay. But those will hold it down so you can tie it. All right, now tie that bow like that. There we go. All right, so now push it down and get it so that that looks cute. Okay, snip those ends to make them even. And I'm gonna push that bow down a little bit so it'll hold our box closed. Okay, so now let's make the cute, <laughs> come on bow. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tie a knot because then it'll be easier. I won't have to worry about that bow holding that closed. There we go, there we go. Now it's behaving like it should. All right, I think I'm gonna take, do I have my ribbon scissors? I do. I think I'm gonna cut these a little bit shorter. Cut them at an angle so they'll be pretty. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't a good angle. There we go. Okay, now this is the Evening Evergreen window pane ribbon, it's so cute. Let's make our tag. Bring back over that stamp. Boy, we are using this stamp a lot today. Now, I posted a bonus project on Wednesday. Make sure you hop back and check that out. Um, it's a very simple card using this suite of products. And I'll have another one on Monday for you. I'll give you a sneak peek of that in just a little while. All right, so grab your circle. Again, I'm just gonna put just boop. A little boop of adhesive <laughs> and let's see where's our scrap paper again we're gonna stamp off we're gonna do the exact same thing you know do we want to use the same color here yeah we do sometimes like this color I feel like sweet sorbet is featured more and in this one maybe pale papaya is featured more maybe we should do pale papaya what do you guys think no I like the navy stick with it your original Erica all right Stamp that, and then stamp that, and then run it through with the embossing folder again. And now I know exactly what the sandwich is. Remember to also, when you're embossing, the Stampin' Up! logo goes at the top. Um, that's the side that will have the raised image. So. If you want the raised image on the front of this piece, you gotta make sure that it's facing up and the Stampin' Up! logo is at the top. Alrighty. Now, we've got that. We're gonna do our cute little label again. Let's clean that off. This time, we've got it in Pale Papaya. And, you know, you can stamp your sentiment right here in the middle of this. You don't have to, like I'm using a banner, and I used a circle last time, but you can keep it simple and stamp your sentiment right there in the middle of your label. Those sentiments were designed for this label, actually. All right, now, I have a banner from Stylish Shapes um, cut out of the DSP, and we're going to put that across with dimensionals. 
And then we're going to put this one with dimensionals. We're going to load up with these dimensionals because you guys, we're not mailing this. All right, now I have an evening evergreen banner and I would recommend stamping and then cutting, but for the sake of the video, I cut it ahead of time. And just in case I mess up, I have an extra. <laughs> um, we're gonna use craft ink and I, I tend to not stamp as well with craft ink. Maybe you do too, because it's a little juicier, a little messier. Um, so you wanna rub your piece of cardstock with your embossing buddy. And then we're gonna get crafting. So you can see by my ink pad, craft is messy because it's almost like paint. It's very pretty. All right, now we're gonna use happy birthday, which is hiding right here. And the edges of my um, white seem to be juicier than the center. Let's see if we can get a good amount of ink. All right, here we go. The reason I'm using white is so that we can emboss. All right, I did pretty good. And now I've got this. And you can use your embossing tray, but since I already have this in a tub, and it's just a tiny piece, let's see if we can just do it like that. All right, brilliant. But we do need this little thing right here. This is the toolkit, the embossing toolkit. And this piece is gonna keep you from burning your fingerprints off. <laughs> Uh, trust me. All right, so we're just gonna hit this. It's gonna take maybe 30 seconds, and you'll know when it hits the right temperature. Let me see if I can get mine. You'll know when it hits the right temperature because your image becomes shiny. All right, let's see. There we go. Now, you wanna move it around. This is dark cardstock. I'm not too worried about it, but lighter cardstock will burn and scorch. All right, there we go. Now give it like, I don't know, like 10, 15 seconds to really firm up. You don't want to smear it. Grab your dimensionals and put that in the middle and then lay that right there. All right, where's our bag? Let's bring it over. And again, some dimensionals. We'll do three. We'll do a triangle. One, two, three and lay that right there in the middle. And there you have it. I think my, my <laughs> I think it's off centered. Yeah, oh well, oh well. All right, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed today. I know it's not the same, I know, but you know, I gotta, I gotta do what I gotta do. School's getting ready to start. My schedule is gonna calm down, hallelujah. And we will be back on track for the most part. I'm gonna be out of town again at the end of August, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so let's look at what we did. We've got the bag, the wraparound bag, the easy card, the less easy card. <laughs> now remember, if you put your order in by Monday, August 15th at midnight, I'll send you the three make and takes for free. You will need a stamp set the punch, and the embossing folder. Everything else I will send you. You can order anything you want, as long as it's $35 minimum, and you use that host code. Unless your order is over $150, don't use a host code, because then you're gonna get Stampin' Rewards, which means you get free stuff. And I'll still send you these for free. But if your order is under $150, please send me, uh, please use that host code, okay? Now let's take a look real quick at that bonus, those bonus projects. We've got this beautiful one. This is the one I posted um, on Wednesday, so go back and check it out. And then this is the, the other one I'm gonna post on Monday. I did the same thing with those flowers. I stamped it two different times. And look, there's that beautiful embossing folder again. All right, you guys, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for joining me, and I'll be back live next Friday with the stamp set I can't remember the name of. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye.